Hello and welcome to a vodcast on how to actually look at internal control questions and this is for the unit 2 uh, top, uh, topic 1 GST for trading uh, organizations and what we're actually looking at today is a extended response for internal controls which you actually be getting in about three weeks time. Okay, just remember on uh, eGrace as well a vodcast on how to actually do journals for GST trading business and also how to do ledgers. Now those ledgers vodcasts you may have to go back to the previous term to have actually have a look at. But today we're actually having a look at an internal control question and we're concentrating training on internal control question two which is in your book okay this one is obviously on Aiden trying to rival his dad and opening a BCS all right now you'll see here and this is given also in the exam a following structure for your report all right so you need to obviously follow that so I've actually set up this one myself so I've got headings here introduction internal control weaknesses for uh, inventories, I've got ones here for accounts uh, payable as well and also a ones for accounts receivable. Now I've actually put in the recommendations uh, and the implications as I actually go so there'll be no headings for that. Alright and then obviously being a report you need to obviously have a conclusion and then uh, a name after it, usually your name and accountant. So how within the introduction itself I usually just provide a very brief definition of what internal controls are okay so internal controls are the safeguard of assets of a business through the implementation of administrative and accounting procedures now all of this information here is straight off the PowerPoint which is also on eGrace within that also you need to have an audience and what you're going to be discussing so a very simple sentence one sentence on what you're going to be doing so in this question we're analyzing accounts receivable payable and inventories and will be conducted and accompanying recommendations recommendations will provide it. Now when you're looking at uh, inventories uh, you will be given some information here so we've got a little uh, policy procedures on how the stock supervisor actually counts their stock okay and they've also got a graphical information here on purchasing history versus sales of inventories as well okay with purchases being in blue and obviously these ones the uh, sales are in orange. Now when you see any form of graphical information regarding inventories you need to go to the inventory report section of your workbook. Okay so we are going to do this one now. Okay so you need to obviously go to here inventory report analysis question how to analyze inventory reports in your actual booklet and what this diagram actually shows you is the purchasing of stock and when we actually sell them so what this is actually getting you to analyze is is the business uh, purchasing stock at the right time and what are the consequences if not now as we can see here the purchases far exceed how much sales we're actually doing in even any given time and in particular this period here in 2012 and also this period here in 2016 so you need to make mention of that okay so the key words you need to obviously incorporate here is an inventory turnover report that your business has obsolete stock. Now what obs obsolete stock basically means is you have stock which is purchased and sitting there for long periods of time in your warehouse or also on your actual fl stock floor itself. Okay because you can see here that the trend line for sales is not very high. Now you need to obviously then tell me what is actually happening here. Now I'm just going to delete this information and I'm going to change our question that we did in class previously. So it can be seen that your business has obsolete stock. It can be seen that your graph that your turnover of stock and purchasing of turnover and purchasing of stock. far exceeds that of your sales and then tell me what's actually happening in particular
Okay. And then you need to actually tell me here a rule of thumb for inventory turnover. A rule of thumb is that inventory turnover must be low as possible as it predetermines cash flow and the effects of the organization's marketing policy. Now, also a key term which you need to obviously talk about here is what is called uh, economic order quantity. Okay. All right, and the next thing you need to tell me is the implications of having obsolete stock. Okay, so your question needs to have the following things. What is the actual uh, internal control weakness? All right, and in that case, it is inventory turnover. All right, and if you've got a graphical, inf uh, graphical representation, you need to actually tell me what's happening there. Okay, so in this case I've actually said that your economic order quantity and your ordering does not actually match the sales in which your, actual, your customers are, are, are ordering your stock at. Okay, and then what the rule of thumb for inventory turnover is, what the consequences are, and then what is the recommendation. So this is your recommendation here. Your recommendation recalculates economic order quantity and buying inventories from approved vendors. Now this is straight from your notes. All right, and within that you need to have justification as well. All right, so your it really needs to have four parts. What's the weakness? What's the implications? What is the recommendation? And what is the justification? All right. Now, in this case, we've got two to actually look at. So when you're actually in the exam, you should look at how many uh, actual things you need to discuss. So we've got two things here, one being a graphical information, the other being a little policy. So this policy is talking about a, the stock supervisor. All right, he orders and checks all stock upon arrival. Now, what this is actually looking for you to analyze is what is called uh, separation of duties within the actual organization. So with inventories, you need to have someone to uh, the actual jobs itself separated for entering of stock or purchasing of stock, checking of stock when it's arrival, all right, in order to obviously minimize the discrepancies that are being recorded. Okay, because if one person has both of these jobs, they can actually take some stock without actually anyone noticing. So if you go back to your actual book, okay, your book will actually tell you here what type of internal control procedures you are actually will be assessed on in the exam. So you might be, you have to look for authority of purchasing of stock, separation of duties, which is what this one actually is. Okay, security of stock, which is what the previous question have. All right, and no stock take as well. And also there will be an inventory report issue, which is your graphical information. All right, so we are going to copy, uh, copy and paste all the information with regards to this issue here.
So it increases fraud due to some person ordering and counting delivered stock. This will result in decrease in cash flow and profitability for the business. And then you need to just go over here and copy and paste the, your recommendation. and then justification. Okay, so that does all the internal controls for, um, uh, for inventories. Now the next one we need to look at is um, the account receivable. It says here, James is the accounts officer of the business, and we're talking about here granting of credit. Okay, now you've got a graphical information of how the cash flow of the business actually is. Now, this shows here an increase in credit sales, and it shows a decrease in cash flow. So, what that basically means is we've got a lot of sales increasing from credit sales, however, there's no money coming in. So, that basically means that uh, James is cooking the books. All right, much like the guy from the port office, I wouldn't be surprised if James Lee won't be here the next day and he's in Hong Kong somewhere at Happy Valley, okay, on the, on the betting on the horses. Okay, so we need to obviously go back to our accounts receivable internal controls here. And then we are obviously looking at the granting of credit, the, so the credit approval process here. Okay. So, when reviewing your credit approval process, implications of having a poor credit approval is that organisations can experience cash flow shortfalls leading to insolvency or bankruptcy. So, there's the internal control weakness. Okay, and within here, you're going to have to discuss the actual graphical information as well and link it all together. All right, so in order to link the graphical information together, it is therefore evident that James is granting credit to anybody in order to make a sale. It is and here's your recommendation, it's recommended that the financial controller adjust the credit approval of, of items sold on credit and a regular review of the overdue accounts. This will result in a decrease in bad debts, increase in cash flow and probability, profitability. So here's your justification. Here is your recommendation. Here is the issue, so the credit approval process. Okay. Right here, credit approval. So it says granting credit, so we're looking at credit process. Here is the implications of having a poor credit uh, policy. And so we have covered those two there. Now the next one obviously looks at here, accounts payable. All right, so this one here,
Rebecca is accounts payable officer and she does a, and and she does reconciliation of subsidiary ledger and control accounts. So that is a good thing. Relying on extensive knowledge and process in eleven accounting, Aidan is given in the task of handling all accounts payable records and payments of all business debts. Okay, so the subsidiary ledger is a good thing that she actually does it. However, there is a separation of duties here with regards to handling accounts payable records and payment of debts. Okay, so if we go to the accounts payable internal controls, okay, it says here separation of duties for handling payable records and payment of debts. So that is the internal control issue. All right, and then here's the implications here. Okay, so what the implications is, is that um, basically if you've got someone in control of authorizing the payments and also recording of the payments of the debts, is that they could actually uh, pay any types of accounts they actually want. All right, so that is obviously going to lead to cash flow issues and purchases of non-business expenses. So non-business expenses are those expenses that are not authorized within the daily operations of the business. Okay, so you need to obviously have a recommendation here and the, and the recommendation and the justification are in one here. Okay, so the recommendation all purchase, purchase orders should be approved by the financial controller to determine whether purchases are required and your justification this reduces fraud and theft of inventory leading to improved profitability okay so you can see here one of these questions it will be between 400 and 600 words okay so this should as i said you should actually do this as the first question because this is worth approximately eight to nine marks with three marks associated with the uh, genre and uh, the terminology which you actually use within your uh, response Okay, so if you have any questions, by all means, come and see me. But this uh, ends the vodcast for internal control procedures, extended response questions. Thank you.